Welcome to a lesson on Rolle's Theorem. Let's go ahead and take a look at what Rolle's Theorem states. Let the function f be continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b if f of a equals f of b. Then there is at least one number c in the open interval from a to b such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Let's take a look at this sketch. If f of a is equal to f of b, you can see the secant line through those two points would be horizontal and therefore would have a slope of zero. And what this theorem states is if that's true and the function is continuous and differentiable on that interval, there must be some other value c where the tangent line would also have a slope of zero, meaning the derivative of the function would be zero at c, meaning the derivative at c would equal zero. So regardless of what this function looks like, if it's continuous and differentiable, there will be at least one value c where the derivative would equal zero. If I was to sketch a different function, maybe something like this, there would be more than one value of c because we'd have a horizontal tangent line here, 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 and here. So there would be four values of c rather than just one. So hopefully when you take a look at this sketch, this idea makes sense that this would have to be true where there's at least one value of c where the derivative would equal zero. Let's go ahead and give it a try. It says determine whether Rolle's theorem can be applied. If it can, then find all values of c where the derivative is equal to zero. So the first step is to determine if f of one is equal to f of two. If these aren't equal, we cannot apply Rolle's theorem. Well, this equals zero, and f of two, four minus six plus two is also equal to zero. So f of one equals f of two. This is a continuous differentiable function on this interval, so we can apply Rolle's theorem. So what we're gonna do is find the derivative and set it equal to zero. The derivative would be two x minus three, and we wanna know when this would equal zero. So we solve for x, we add three to both sides, divide by two, so we have x equals three halves, so c is equal to three halves, meaning at x equal three halves, we should have a horizontal tangent line. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here's the interval that we're considering from one to two. f of one equals f of two, it's continuous and differentiable, and you can also see that x equals 1.5, we have a horizontal tangent line, therefore the derivative would equal zero. Let's go ahead and try another one. So the first step is to determine if f of zero equals f of two. So we have zero squared minus two times zero times e to the zero, that's zero times one, so zero. f of two would equal two squared minus two times two, well that's gonna be zero zero times e squared is also zero. Next, this graph is differentiable and continuous on this interval. So now we can apply Rolle's theorems. So we'll find the derivative and see where it equals zero in this interval. We will have to apply the product rule here. This is our first function. This is our second function. So f prime of x equals the first function times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x plus the second function times the derivative of x squared minus 2x, that would be 2x minus 2. Before we set this equal to zero, we can factor this. There's a common factor of e to the x. We'd be left with x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 2 equals zero. Combining our like terms here, we'd have e to the x times x squared minus two equals zero. Well, e to the x is never going to equal zero, so we need to set x squared minus two equal to zero. Let's go ahead and do that up here. So we'll isolate the x squared, take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus the square root of two, but negative square root two is not in this interval. So our value for c would be positive square root two. Let's go ahead and check this graphically. 
again, we're considering this function on the interval from 0 to 2. f of a equals f of b. That's correct. And the square root of 2 is right about here, where we would have a horizontal tangent line, meaning that our derivative would equal 0. OK, let's try one more. Here we have a trig function. So let's first determine if f of pi over 6 equals f of pi over 3. So it's going to be sine 2 times pi over 6 and sine of 2 pi over 3. Well, the sine of pi over 3 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 2 pi over 3 is also square root of 3 over 2. These both have a reference angle of 60 degrees in the first and second quadrant. Remember that sine is positive in both the first and second quadrant. Next, this function is continuous and differentiable on this interval. So we need to determine where the derivative would equal zero. This is a composite function. f prime of x is going to equal the derivative of sine 2x would be cosine 2x times the derivative of the inner function, which would give us 2. We want to know when this is equal to zero. So we have 2 cosine 2x two equals 0. Divide both sides by 2. When is cosine 2x equal to 0? Remember, we're only talking about x values on this interval. And we know that the cosine function is equal to 0 at pi over 2 radians. So since we know our angle must be equal to pi over 2 radians, what we'll do is we'll set 2x equal to pi over 2 radians and solve. So multiply both sides by 1 half. x would be equal to pi over 4 radians. So the value of c is pi over 4 radians. That's where the derivative would equal 0. Again, let's check this. We're only considering this function on the interval from pi over 6 to pi over 3. f of a equals f of b. We can see it's continuous and differentiable. And we can also see right here at pi over 4, we would have a horizontal tangent line. And therefore, the derivative would equal 0. The next video will be on the mean value theorem, which is just an extension of Rolle's theorem.